So, this is time for another glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job, so let's get to it. Um, <laughs> Solar Winds is the uh, story that, man, just keeps on giving. It's like Target. Target back in 2013. Yes, it was back in 2013 that uh, that the Target breach happened. Um, and man, that was just the story that just kept on giving. You just kept learning more and more and more about the failures, about the 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 problems, about the issues, uh, from third party risk management to uh, just a lot of things that were going on. Um, Equifax, you know, you just kept learning more and more about. You were warned about this, and you still and oh no, it gets worse, right? And it still gets in congressional. Um, congressional hearings keep revealing more and more information. Well, one thing we knew, I won't say fairly early on, I guess, I guess sometime in December, we probably learned this, but we did learn that one of the passwords on a SolarWinds update server, uh, this was a server, uh, that basically, uh, fed updates out to products and could be used to download, um, updates and software. Uh, the password to it was SolarWinds123, all low caps, by the way, because we don't want to add any entropy whatsoever to our password cracker. Um, but SolarWinds123 was the password that was used uh, for years, by the way. It was instituted apparently in 2017 and did not get changed until 2019. So we knew that. We also knew that this was also a password that was leaked in a GitHub repository and it took a security researcher reaching out in 2019 about it saying, Hey, since 2018, we've known about this password. I've already uploaded a POC file. People could totally be just uploading, you know, uh, uh, packages that claim to be solar winds, but completely aren't. Um, that researcher had already reached out. Now, to their credit, as soon as they were told about it, they changed it. But wow, you left that in there for two whole years. Well, they were called on this on the floor of a uh, congressional hearing. And uh, one of the Congress uh, congresswomen in there was kind of making fun of them for their password and saying, I have... On, uh, on, on, on her technology she gives to her kids, she has a better password on her computer for her parental controls that keep her kids from watching too much YouTube. And, uh, and so she was, you know, she was chastising them for this. It's like, why? Why did you have this password being used? And that's what we were all wondering. Why would you ever use that password? The intern did it. <clears throat> is not the direct quote that was being used, um, but the quote that was used is, I believe that was a password that an intern used on one of his servers back in 2017, which was reported to our security, security team, and it was immediately removed. That statement makes it, first of all, that statement makes one believe that was back in 2017, it was brought to our attention, it was immediately removed back in 2017. It's not the case. Um, the CEO even echoed the comment saying that related to a mistake that um, an intern made and they violated our password policies and they posted that password on their own private GitHub account. As soon as it was identified and brought to the attention of my security team, they took that down. And I'm sure the executives thought they were patting themselves on the back here like, hey, we did our part. Our intern caused that problem, and uh, and it was brought to our attention, and we fixed it. So yay us, go team! First of all, when you're ex when you're an executive, uh, and I haven't taken a look at Solar Winds to see how many you know hundreds of million dollars they likely profit per year, <clears throat> but when you're the CEO of a company whose product is literally responsible for managing everybody's IT environment, managing systems, network infrastructure, virtual machines, IP networks, DHCP. It's what Orion does. 
basically you have God mode access into all these systems. It is a single point of fail when that system goes down or is compromised. When you are serving out that code um, to your customers and your response to a congressperson chastising you about a SolarWinds123 password being used is the intern did it? My immediate question is, why the hell didn't you check up on what the intern did in your environment? Like, why the heck did you not look at every system that that intern touched and review it and any password that was set? Because now they know it. Why didn't you change it? Oh, they violated our password policies. Well, apparently your password policies and decommissioning policies and and um, and hiring hiring and firing policies does not include going through and making sure that known known credentials by that person are changed. There's zero self awareness in that statement they made. This makes you look worse, not better. So it's so easy for apparently in in Solar Winds for someone to just mess up and they're never going to catch it. For 2 years it wasn't caught. And second of all, blaming the intern if I was the director of human resources or even just the director of the program who uh, the internship program, I would have been melting through my chair at that point because who's going to trust us to take care of their interns now when SolarWinds executives are just going to go down to the floor of Congress or not the floor of Congress, but a congressional hearing and they're just going to say the intern did it. What's really going on here is a lack of sound management. This is a management failure through and through. Management is responsible for governance and compliance of their policies. Management is responsible for making sure appropriate controls are in place to take care of the hiring and firing of employees around passwords and authentication and access. The managers, the executives, are ultimately responsible for this. This is their policies. These are their practices. This is their lack of maturity. Sure, an intern made a mistake. It's not the first time someone has uploaded code or uploaded things to their GitHub. They're an intern. Do they... I'm not going to say do they not know any better. I don't want to remove agency from them. But at the same time, why was it so easy to do? <laughs> why was it so easy to just be left laying around? Uh, why are you totally trusting your interns uh, to, to, to do stuff and then never check on it? That speaks more about your management and your policies you have in place around your interns doing stuff in your environment. That's that's terrible. If I were CEO, no, so I'm sorry. If I was the CISO of that company and they just blamed one of my security engineers or one of my interns, not for something malicious. If it was malicious, if this intern did something malicious, now that's criminal charges. A court of law is going to determine their guilt or not. But that would be our that would be our allegation. That's different. This isn't criminal. This isn't um this wasn't malicious. This intern had every good intention of taking care of this company. And making sure that they were doing a good job. And they were going to learn something from it. And if a CEO of a company I work for, as a CISO, went 
and said, or CTO, went and said, one of my interns, one of our interns, one of my interns caused this. I would likely resign in protest. What a shame. What a shame that these this, this CEO, Kevin Thompson, brought upon his company. I would be ashamed to say something like that to a congressperson. I I I would be a I would be ashamed. To face my CISO, my CTO, my CIO ever again. Because I blamed one of their people who were just doing their job. You know, Captain Captain Picard and Captain Kirk, one thing that was always kind of common between both of them is that they took responsibility for the actions of their crew when their crew did things wrong. And someone was seeking to punish their crew. They would take responsibility and say, no, I'm to blame. It's my crew. It's my ship. This was our fault. This was the command's fault. This was my fault. I will stand for my crew. Another thing that they did really well is the opposite. Whenever good things were said. Instead, they would thank their crew. Instead, they would say, you know, if it's like, you know, Jim, you've done a good job, or or, or Jean-Luc, you've done a good job, you know, doing this, or, you know, this is a credit to Starfleet. They would usually look to some of their crew standing around and saying that it was really them that got them through this. I have a good crew. This is a good ship. They would defer credit and accept accountability. That's a little, little Star Trekky nerdgasm there to have talking about this because it gives you all the warm and fuzzies. But that's really leadership, and CEO Kevin Thompson really lacked leadership here um, when he said that <laughs> it was an intern. I mean, I just don't understand. Why, uh, why, why, why that was, why that was said that, and by the way, he was a former CEO. Uh, the, the new CEO is named, uh, Sudakar Ramakrishna. And both of them echoed each other's statements about this being the intern's fault. Now, this password is so far not suspected or not known to have caused the breach. But if since 2017 this password has been out there, used on that system, wouldn't surprise me if the threat actor used that in some of their reconnaissance to figure out the system, to figure out how their updates work, to figure out how things get loaded in there. Maybe that's not the way they got in to then be able to 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 pursue those, uh, to pursue the actual supply chain. But it may have been part of their reconnaissance. Actually, uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if that's the case, especially um, since the uh, since the credentials were out on GitHub. What's interesting about the dates is that it is believed that the supply chain attack or the supply chain breach started in October of 2019. They changed that password in November 2019. Coincidence? Probably. <laughs> but it doesn't look good. <laughs> How do you spend three years? Um, and you're going to blame the intern when you spent three years. And that's the thing is it doesn't surprise me. And here's the thing. It doesn't surprise me that solar winds didn't have good password policies. It doesn't surprise me that solar winds wasn't checking on interns, 
uh, after they leave to change their passwords and to change systems and to make sure they harden systems against whatever the intern may have knowledge of. It doesn't surprise me about any of that. But then to know that these are your failures, your failures, your gaps, we call them in the professional world, your opportunities to improve, and then to take that and say, that's the intern's fault. No, it's not. You've, you've got the weightier part here. You've got the governance. You've got the visibility. You've got the, you've got the fiduciary responsibility to your stockholders. That intern doesn't. You do. Man, if I was, if I, if that was my intern, I would have, I would have resigned in protest. I would have written to Congress and said, hey, that's not the whole story. I can't talk about it probably due to an NDA of some kind. But that's not, that's not true. There are failings going on which are actually to blame for that. Sound security design should be able to withstand and actually catch an intern failure like that. Thank goodness the intern wasn't named. But that intern knows who they are. Um, and in fact, if, uh, if Vinoth Kumar, who ended up uh, posting about this, Looks like he actually, uh, yeah, it looks like he actually uh, went through a little bit to make sure the uh, GitHub repo was um, redacted when he posted on Twitter. So it's not something that you could just go into the GitHub repo and find out who this intern was. Um, looks like most people were doing a decent job of trying to... Uh, trying to redact, but it's probably not too difficult to go and look up based on what some of these people were looking for. Um, probably not too, too hard to actually see who this person is. And I don't want anybody to go out and, uh, I don't want anybody to go out and find this person, but who, who knows? Maybe this person's life is now ruined. Maybe this person's career is now ruined. You know, did their boss do some extra looking and said, was this you? Well, you're gone. Now, that person's not come forward voluntarily, and I wouldn't either. <laughs> I would not invite this upon me. Um, I would not inv invite that scrutiny upon me like this because it wasn't invited when they said, oh yeah, it's this guy. This this intern caused an issue. Um, but man, I wonder how this has affected this person's career now because they were just an intern. They were a student. They were learning. They were there to learn. That's the other thing. An internship program is not free help. An internship program is, it is a mentoring and teaching opportunity. An internship program is about you as a company, you as an infosec department, you as an IT organization, offering opportunities for students to learn on the job, for them to take on a project of their own, for them to see it through and take care of it and make sure, make sure things go right. And you put the proper supervision in there and you put the proper mentoring in there. And you help them navigate the waters of change control, navigate persons and people and process that you got to work through to, to get changes put in place and to um, stand up infrastructure. That's what internships are for. It's not free help or cheap help. Internships there are for the learning. And what you just told Every college out there is, we don't teach our interns, we blame them when something goes wrong. That's what we do. So I guess the glass of OJ tip today is, don't blame your interns, take responsibility. <laughs> but also, are you watching your interns, uh, are you watching your interns work? Or do you have password policies in place? Do you have, uh... 
procedures put in place that when an intern or an employee leaves, you actually do a kappa or some kind of look at what uh, they had access to, uh, what systems they set up, what passwords they put in place, what were the, what projects they were assigned to, and make sure all those passwords are changed to make sure this person does not possibly have access into your environment. Do you do that? I mean, that is a fairly mature process, so I won't blame people for not having it, but that's a bit of a lesson here too. Take it to that next level. Start getting your uh, environment to that next level of maturity to where you can do that. And you can do it on a more automated basis. That can get pretty difficult. But try, you know, you, you don't have to all or nothing automation. You can automate some of the things and then make some of the things manual. So there's there is that. Hybrid is hybrid is a good way to learn. Hybrid is a good way uh, to start getting in, um, getting into whatever model you're trying to go to. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. But don't blame your interns. Don't blame your interns. <sighs> the shame that they should be feeling and they don't. It's abhorrent. It's appalling. Anyway, have a great rest of your day. This has been a glass of OJ.